Hello everyone, welcome back to Africa Revealed. Today we are visiting Vintek, the capital city of Namibia. The name Vintek is derived from the Afrikaans, meaning windy corner. Situated roughly in the center of the country, Vintek is the largest and capital city of Namibia. This is an African country located southwestern coast of Africa, bordered by Angola to the north, Botswana to the east, Zambia to the northeast, South Africa to the southeast, and South and Atlantic Ocean to the west. Windhoek is the social and political, economic, cultural center of Namibia. Its population in 2002 was 431,000, but is continually growing. In this video, we will discover 10 cool facts about Windhoek. Please do subscribe if you haven't already, and turn on the notification bell in order to be notified of any new video. Now, let's get into it. One of the cleanest cities in Africa. The tourist portal on the official City of Windhoek website reads, Windhoek is often described as one of the cleanest capitals in Africa and visitors are often surprised that the city is considered to be part of deepest Africa. It offers all modern amenities that conform to some of the world's highest standards. When Windhoek was elected to host Afri City's 2000 summit, the mayor of Windhoek at the time, Emmanuel Ngashideko, positioned the city in terms of its cleanliness as an attribute setting Windhoek apart. It is regarded a jewel to be jealously guarded. Its status of the cleanest city in Africa was peddled by City of Windhoek officials for a while until Kingali snatched the crown from Windhoek around 2016. Arguably, the status did not come by chance, but it was and is a result of an entrenched culture of cleanliness among the people living in Vintuk. Slogans such as my waste, my responsibility have really been helpful. Windhoek still features among the top 10 cleanest cities in Africa, coming at number 5 after Kingali, Tunis, Port Louis and Cape Town. In March of this year, City of Vintuk councillors embarked on a cleanup campaign to reclaim its former glory. This campaign was supported by various stakeholders such as Rent a Drum, ShopRite Namibia, Plastic Packaging, Namibia Recycling Forum, Development Workshops and Learners from School in Baruweb Moses constituency. If everyone gets on board, the great change will definitely be observed in the city. The Three Castles of Vintuk on your way towards Clan Ventic from the city centre while on Sam Niyama Drive, you will see the three castles on your right. The largest and most visible one is Schwarzenberg. This tower was built in 1891 by Kurt von Francis during the construction of Altefest. In 1904, the army sold the tower to architect Willem Sander who converted the place into a beer garden. It was called Sperling's Last. It was bought in 1913 by Dr. Bogenslav Kraft von Schwerin. He engaged Willem Sander to convert the tower into a castle that will be used as a private home. This is where it got its name from. Today, it is the residence of Italy's ambassador to Namibia. Heinitzburg Castle. The architect Willem Sander built it in 1914. In 1916, he sold it to Hans Bogenslav von Schwerin, who named it Heinitzburg after his birth. It is now a public hotel and restaurant. Sanderberg. It was built in 1917 and 1919. It is the smallest of the three castles built by the architect Willem Sander. It is his private residence. Its style combines several medieval features. Languages in Vintuk. What languages would you most likely hear in the city? Well, during the apartheid regime in Namibia, German, English and Afrikaans were the official languages in the country. However, in 1990, after Namibia gained its independence from South Africa, English became the official language. The most widely spoken languages in Namibia households are Oshuwambo dialects by 48% of the population, Kokokweb by 11%, Afrikaans by 10%, Rukwangali by 9%, Oshiherero by 9%, and other native languages include Bantu languages, Setswana, Giruku, Kwe, Kuhan, Mushu, Ye, and the Khoisan languages like Kung, Ekoko, and Naro, among others. 
English, the official language is spoken by 3% as their native language. Portuguese is spoken by 4 to 5%. The total population made up of mostly Angolan community. The number of Angolans in Namibia declined from 2014 to 15, affected mainly by the neighboring country's economic crisis. Among the white population, 60% speak Afrikaans, 32 German, 7% English and 1% Portuguese. Indigenous languages are included in the school syllabus at a primary level. The medium instruction at secondary level is English. Afrikaans is the only language that comes close to a lingua franca and is spoken by most black townsmen people, together with English and their native language. When you go to Vinduk, you can say hello, guten tag, walalapo as a conversation starter. A plate of game for you? Africa is well known for its rich diversity of beautiful wild animals, mainly taken care of for tourism purposes. However, game meat is big business in Namibia. It is believed that animals aren't in danger of being extinct since sustainable farming has managed to increase rather than decrease their numbers. Some of these include kudu schnitzel and springbok stringenoff. Kudu or kudu is a koi koi name for this large antelope, a woodland antelope found throughout southern and eastern Africa. This meal is made from kudu beef a cheese, lemon butter or mushroom sauce with a bread definitely enhances the dish. The springbok is a medium-sized antelope found mainly in South and Western Africa. A springbok stringenoff is a beef stir fry with mushrooms, black pepper, paprika, nutmeg and a bit of white wine and fresh cream. Sounds like a meal that will knock your socks off. You can try these two at the Atosha Safari Lodge. Impala steak. The impala is a medium-sized antelope found in eastern and southern Africa. Its meat is eaten with pepper sauce. Some baked veggies make an awesome combination. You can try this at the Kulala Desert Lodge. Oryx steak. The oryx is a large antelope with spear-like horns, thick horse-like neck, a short mane, and a compact muscular body. Its meat is cooked and served with a good size of a baked potato. It is both tender and flavorful. You will enjoy this at Joe's Beer House. Given the opportunity, would you eat gay meat or would you feel guilty? If yes, find out how Elan's steak, zebra, ostrich and crocodile meat taste in some of Winter's greatest restaurants. Remember to comment and share with us your experience below. The Church of Peace Located on Traffic Island on Robert Avenue, opposite Tin Plus is the historic landmark. This is the Lutheran church in Winter called the Church of Christ, Christus Kirk. After the end of the wars between the German and the Khoi Khoi, Herero and Ovambo in 1907, the groundbreaking ceremony took place and on October 16, 1910, the church was opened and dedicated as the Church of Peace. Christus Kirk was designed by Gottlieb Redeker, a German government architect who drew up the first designs in 1900 and 1901. The plans weren't completed until 1906 as they were the Herero and Number uprisings against the German to deal with first. It was constructed using quartz stone mined from Avis Dam and has a mixture of Gothic revival and new Romanesque and Art Nouveau influences. Its spire is 79 feet high. The clock, part of the roof, and the three bronze bells were shipped from Germany, while the portico is made from Caracara marble imported from Italy. They were cast by one of Franz Schilling. They bear German inscriptions with the phrases Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, and goodwill to men. This architectural beauty is a definite must-see on a visit to Vintage. The National Museum of Namibia The National Museum is located at three different places in central Vintuk. The Awela Display Center houses a zoological and general scientific collection. It is located in Lideritz Street and it shares a building with Windhoek Public Library. The Awela primarily houses displays on elements of Namibian, 
natural history and certain cultural practices of the Namibian people. The Alta Fest Museum houses the historic collection of Namibia's colonial period, as well as the recent past. It is accommodated at the Alta Fest building in Robert Bugabe Avenue, next to the Independence Memorial Museum. Administration and the National Museum Library were established in 1963 and are situated also on Robert Mugabe Avenue, opposite the Artifest. There are also topical displays of the country's cultural aspects. These museums in Namibia offer an excellent display of the country's struggle for independence through memorabilia and photos from the colonial period. There is also a beautiful display of rock art and indigenous artifacts. Outside the museum, you will see a collection of coaches and railway engines, which together form Namibia's first row gauge trains. With the rapidly growing population of Vintuk and increased investment in development of the city, there was an increased pressure on the supply of water. In 1968, the municipality built the plant making Windhoek the first city in the world to produce its own drinking water from waterways. In 2002, the city was built a new DPR plant next to the original one, which is still in operation, but only producing water for irrigation. The Kuriaha plant is referred to as the cradle of water reclamation. It is believed to be the world's only pipe-to-pipe -pipe DPR facility. It produces purified water for over 400,000 city residents. This water is not treated again at a conventional water treatment plant, but goes directly into the distribution system. It is reported that no illnesses have plagued the city due to this purification system. The new 21,000 cubic meters a day reclamation plant provides about 35% of the overall drinking water supply for the city. The plant, whose construction was completed in 2002, has become a source of pride for the city and still leads the world in the direction of reclamation. Throughout its years of operation, the water has continued to meet high standards at all times and public health has been protected. The National Botanic Garden of Namibia the National Botanic Garden of Namibia is situated on a hill between Klein Ventuk and the city center of Ventuk. This is the only botanic garden in the country, it is one of five subsections within the National Botanic Research Institute. It is administered by a Ministry of Agriculture, Water and Forestry. The mission of the garden is to protect and promote the Namibian flora while functioning as a research, educational and recreational facility for Namibians and tourists as well. The estate is about 12 hectares big. The larger part of the area is unlandscaped and serves as a study area for local students. A number of walking trails lead through the garden where most of the common woody plants are clearly labeled. Bird plants lists are available at the reception. You will see the desert house, rockery, nursery house, which are a comprehensive collection of Namibian succulents, many of which are rare and endangered. The garden also claims to have one of the densest area of Vintuk Elo. In the early 1970s, a forest of quiver trees and bottle trees were planted and today this forest is as well worth the visit. Early in the year, after good rains, you can come and admire some of the garden lilies flowering along the lily walk. The garden is also home to a variety of insects, birds, reptiles and mammals. The picnic area provides a perfect spot to end your visit as you relax in the tranquil atmosphere of the garden. The gardens are open from Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and every first Saturday of the month from 8 to 11. Entrance is free and safe for the weekend. Don't just litter and damage any plant or plant materials. Stay on the marked trails. Penduka Women's Needlework Project the Penduka Women's Needlework Project is a non-profit organization that helps the local and less privileged women of Namibia to support themselves and their families by teaching them needlework. After training the women to join the Penduka Village Production Team, 
It has over time provided employment for over 600 women and also supports close to 1,000 tuberculosis patients through the proceeds realized from its sales. The women earn a fair income from their sales of these unique handmade products, while others with entrepreneurial skills are given enough support to start their own business. Penduka also has a hospitality side that offers restaurant services and conference facilities. Penduka is based in Katutura, the former black township of Vintic. Penduka brings women hope by encouraging them to wake up and take the lead. Other services offered by Penduka include its training and networking center, giving out interest-free loans to women for their studies and investments, organizing exchange programs with countries in the West, and aiding mothers in paying school fees for their children where there is a need. Penduka also trains women in designs and crafts and management skills and educates them on health risks such as HIV and AIDS. You can enjoy searching the market and selecting handmade wares while at the same time supporting this local improvement program. The Gibeon Meteorites It is believed that 600 million years ago, a massive meteorite hurtled through space before crashing into Namibia before it was even called Namibia. Before it entered Earth's atmosphere, it shattered, sending more than 100 meteorites shooting towards the planet and leaving blazing trails in their wake. A large portion of the space rocks were found around the village of Gibeon. This earned them the name Gibeon Meteorites. Local people used the meteorites to make iron tools and weapons way before the start of the Iron Age. These rocks gained an international recognition after the Englishman Captain J.E. Alexander found them during one of his travels in 1838. A sample was sent back to London where the astronomer Sir Herschel John noticed its high quality of nickel, declaring it came from an iron meteorite. Between 1911 and 1913, Dr. Paul Range collected 37 meteorite fragments in the Gibeon area. Since the installation of the meteorite fountain, another meteorite disappeared. Two had already been stolen while in storage where four were donated to various institutions for research. All the pieces are believed to be part of one large meteorite with a mass of over 17 tons. More than 150 meteorites have been tracked and recovered since the 19th century report of Captain Alexander. However, only 30 of these prehistoric extraterrestrial wonders are available for all to see on the post mall in Vintuk. They are mounted on steel columns and in February 1950 they were declared a national monument. We have come to the end of the video. If you liked it, consider giving it a thumbs up and visiting the city that hosted the 44th Miss Universe pageant in 1995. Until the next one, bless!